Okay, now we're going to look at the sum of a geometric series. So there's a sum formula, which is easy to use, but unfortunately, you need to know the proof of that sum formula. It can be quite difficult to follow, so you might want to watch this more than once. The sum of n terms, so Sn, that's how we write the sum of n terms. So the sum of the n terms is a is the first term, a r, so you multiply by the common ratio, then you multiply by the common ratio again to get the next term, and so on. It goes all the way up to a r n minus 1. So a r n minus 1 is the last term of the series. So if we had 10 terms, it would be a r to the power of 9. If we had 20 terms, it would be a r to the power of 19. If we had 100 terms, a r to the power of 99. So that's what the sum is. The sum is adding all the terms up. But we need to make this into a formula. So the way we do it is we multiply every single term by r. It might not be clear why we're doing this right now, but it will become clearer. So we've multiplied every single term by r. So Sn is multiplied by r, which becomes r times Sn. A times r is AR. So each power, so AR1 goes to AR2. AR2 goes to AR cubed. So the power of r in each one goes up by one. So we had AR n minus one here. That goes up by one to AR n. AR n minus two goes up by one to AR n minus one. Why have we done this? We've done this so we can cancel out a whole load of terms. And we do that by taking the bottom one away from the top one. So Sn minus Rsn. And we take away all of these terms. So we take away all of this from all of this. So if I take away this, 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 take away this. We're taking away the whole of the bottom line from the top line. So what happens? Well, we had an AR on the top line. We take away an AR on the bottom line. So that cancels out. We had an AR squared on the top line. We take away an AR squared on the bottom line. So that cancels out. We will have an AR cubed there. <laughs> we take away one from the bottom line. It cancels out. We'll have an AR at n minus 3 there, minus 2. So we take away all of that. It all cancels out. So what is left? Sn minus Rsn on the left, and just A minus ARN on the right. So we take away all of those terms, and we're left with what looks like a much simpler formula. So we want Sn by itself. So what we do is we factorise that out. So we factorise Sn out of this side, which leaves us with Sn outside the bracket, 1 minus r inside the bracket. And we've also factorised on this side, taken a out of the bracket. So we've got a 1 minus r to the n on the right side. Then we just have to divide by 1 minus r. And that gives us our final formula. So as I say, that's a proof you need to know. You need to be able to do that. But this is the final formula that we're going to use most of the time. OK, find the sum of the first five terms of a series. So we're looking at a sum now. Find the sum of the first five terms of a series with first term five. A is five and R is three. So this time we're going to use the sum formula. So the sum of the first five terms. So S5 is equal to A5, 1 minus R3 to the power of N, so to the power of 5, over 1 minus R, 1 minus 3. So we just type that into the calculator. And that gives us 605. So the sum of the first five terms 
is 605. Okay, a geometric progression has the fourth term minus 32, fifth term 64. Find the sum of the first 10 terms. So this time we don't have the information to put straight into the sum formula. So we don't know what A is and we don't know what R is. So we're going to have to find them out first. So we're going to use the nth term formula to find out A and R. And then we're going to use the sum formula to find the sum of the first 10 terms. So what have we got here? UN is, so U4 is minus 32. U5 is 64. So U4 minus 32 is equal to A R N minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. And U5 is 64, which is equal to A R N minus 1, which is 4. We're going to divide the two equations again. So we divide, divide, 64 divided by minus 32, that would be minus 2. A's cancel, R4 divided by R3 is R. So R is minus 2, and we're going to substitute that back in. So we'll substitute it back in here, A minus 2 cubed. So minus 2 cubed is minus 8. Dividing both sides by minus 8 gives me A is 4. So we know A and R now. So we're going to use the sum formula to find S10, the sum of the first 10 terms. So the sum of 10 terms is A, which is 4, to the power of 1 minus Rn. So 1 minus minus 2 to the power of n, to the power of 10, over 1 minus r. And we just type that into the calculator, and that gives us negative 1,364. Okay, here's some more questions. Pause the video, give them a go, and press play when you're ready. Okay, find the sum of the first five terms of a series. So using the sum formula, the first term seven, so A is seven and R is two, common ratio of two, R is two. So S5 equals A, so seven, multiplied by one minus R to the power of N, so 1 minus 2 to the power of 5 over 1 minus r, 1 minus 2. So we just type it into the calculator and that gives us 217. Okay, question 2. A geometric progression has a second term, u2 equals 4.5. Second term of 4.5 and a fifth term of 121.5. U5 equals 121.5. Find the sum of the first 10 terms. So we're going to find A and R first, and then we're going to use the sum formula. The second term, U2, U2 equals 4.5, and that is A, R to the power of N minus 1, which is 1. The fifth term, 121.5, is A, R, to the power of M minus 1, which is 4. So I'm going to divide the two equations. So 121.5 divided by 4.5 is 27. The A's cancel. R to the power of 4 divided by R is R cubed. The cube root of 27 is 3 
So R must be 3. Substituting that back in, so 4.5 equals A times 3. Divide both sides by 3, so 4.5 divided by 3 is 1.5. So A is equal to 1.5. So now the sum of 10 terms, so using the formula, the sum of 10 terms is A, 1.5 multiplied by 1 minus 3 to the power of 10 over 1 minus r, which is 3. So type it into the calculator. That gives us 44,286. Okay, now we're going to look at the sum to infinity. So if r, so say if r is between minus 1 and plus 1, we get a sum to infinity. So eventually the numbers that we're adding on get so small that they are 0. So imagine you had a as 2 and r as a half. So you start off with 2 and then you half it, so you've got 1, and then you half it again, half, and then you keep halving it, the numbers that you're getting each time get smaller and smaller and smaller and so on. Eventually, you're adding on nothing at all. So if you're adding all these together, you're adding on nothing at all eventually, so you can get a sum to infinity when r is between minus 1 and plus 1. There's a formula for the sum to infinity, and it is really easy. So if, imagine n is a really, really massive number, and we've got r raised to the power of a really, really massive number. So if you add a half to the power of 100, so if you add half to the power of 100, you're going to get a really, really small number, 0 0.00000. So as we keep increasing it, eventually this here, r to the power of n, will go to 0. So if you imagine that this is 0, there's nothing there, what formula have you got left? So the sum to infinity is 1 times a, which is a over 1 minus r. So the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. So here's a question. Find the sum to infinity of a series when a is 10 and r is 0 0.2. So the sum to infinity is a, which is 10, over 1 minus r, which is 0 0.2. So we just type that into the calculator. So 10 divided by 1 minus 0 0.2, and that gives us 12.5. So the sum to infinity here is 12.5. Okay, here's another question. Have a go at this one. So we've got the sum to infinity is a, 25 over 1 minus r, 1 minus 0 0.25. So 25 over 1 minus 0 0.25, and that gives us 100 over 3. 33.3 .3 recurring, or 100 over 3.